Christmas very empowering. So tell us about your book, this book, The Happiness Result. Tell us about the book and who you wrote it for. Well, the book is The Happiness Result, and I wrote it for today's busy people. Today's busy people who are so busy, 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 trying to get ahead or stay ahead or aim for that success that they they feel is out there and that eventually when they get to that success they will be happy so it's me trying to help today's busy people teaching them different ways seven different ways to start infusing more of that happiness more of themselves into their life in in personal life and professional life so that way they make better choices they feel more whole and complete in any wherever they are, whether it's at work or family. So giving them, again, the seven different techniques, offering that to them and teaching them different ways to start practicing that, to give more of what they want in life, whether it's more time for themselves, better health, more love in their life or for themselves or success and work-life balance. Yeah, that's so key. You know, there's so many different articles on work-life balance. Can you have it? Is it real? Uh, can you can you achieve it? You know, all the, uh, that kind of thing. So when yeah. you when you teach people all of this, what what is the one thing, the one practice that people can start doing immediately to become happier? The one practice that they could do is, I would have to say it would be mindfulness. And that and if we could kind of filter it down even more is just taking, making a mental note of how they are reacting or how they are feeling. So if teaching them, if, you know, they're in a situation where, you know, it could be a busy day, what, what's going on in their mind and how is their body reacting to that? Are their shoulders up to their ears because they're so tense or, Are they taking shallow breaths? What's causing them to react? And once they start noticing how their body and mind are reacting to stress, then they'll be able to then say, oh, okay, I need to step, take a step back. I need to do something, either leave a a stressful situation, a stressful meeting, go for a walk, or maybe I need to get something to eat right away, or maybe I need to take a deep breath. Or maybe I need to just not say anything and just be fully there for this person. So awareness of how we react is very, very important. That that would be a very good start. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I'm thinking of how many times I've seen people just, you know, be frantic about things. And then when something happens that they just absolutely, there's nothing they can do about it. I'm thinking because I travel all the time. So I'm thinking... You know, people have got to, um, you know, they're, they always either want to be in first class or they want to make sure they make their plane or they want to be the first one off the plane or whatever it happens to be. And then, of course, if there's a snowstorm or a weather delay yeah. or a mechanical or something they just can't do anything about, they take whatever situation it is. Like I've seen the people who, who uh, you know, want to be in first class and then because they've because of having to take a different flight or whatever, they're stuck in uh, the middle seat. And, you know, they're still going to get there, you know, and it's really all in how you observe what's happening to you. And in the end, Mm -hmm. you know, you're probably going to tell this funny story about it and you're going to laugh at it. But at the time, Mm -hmm. it seems so perplexing, you know, so important. Mm -hmm. So you also, you know, you, you have this workbook, this companion workbook, um, mm-hmm. that's going to be released shortly. Um, why did you write the workbook after the book or not with the book? Well, that's a very good question because I didn't, I wrote it separately because I wanted the, this book, this journal slash workbook to not only be a companion to the actual book, but also I, I wanted to be able to stand alone. So the focus with this journal slash workbook is for goal setting. It's a combination of a journal that has to do with goal setting, helping people really focus in on their goals and also be able to put in the gratitude 
that they've experienced that day that they've been, you know, maybe something that they experienced towards working a goal and also putting in documenting their successes. Because so many times we go from day to day thinking about, oh, I didn't do this. I got to do this. Oh, there's another list I got to go through. We take very little time in reflecting on what we've done, our successes. So they could be little or big, but it's very important for us to start really claiming or celebrating all these little successes that we've done to make us feel like we be worthwhile. We did whatever we did mattered. And then also there's a part where there we create intentions too. So it's a book on goal setting and also teaching people with simple techniques every day, something that's going to help them create positive habits towards doing more and more action towards reaching their goal. So I'm really, really excited about it because I can't wait to start using it myself. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's always a good sign, right? Well, you know, um, I want to tell people how to get in touch with you. Your website is healthandhappinessspecialist.com and that's all one word health and happiness specialist.com. Is that the best way to, to reach you, um, Debbie, or is there another way that you'd like them to find you? Well, they could reach me there and there they'll be able to see different ways I could work with them, either coaching or be doing a training for their corporation or being a keynote speaker. Uh, There is an email there as well, which is info at health and happiness specialist.com. But I'm also on Facebook And I have a page there called Health and Happiness Specialist. And I'm on Twitter, uh, UHJ Debbie Lynn with one N. And I'm also on Pinterest and Instagram and, of course, LinkedIn. So um, if you really want to find me, I'm there. You're there. Okay. Well, I want to ask you uh, uh, like a final question here. Um, In all the people that you've worked with, in all the people you've come in contact with, and I'm sure once they hear you're a health and happiness specialist, what what is the biggest issue you have found with the people you've been? Mm. The biggest issue has been not having enough time for themselves, not having enough me time. So those are the women who come in and they're just so hungry to learn different ways to give themselves permission to receive, permission to accept who they are, permission to love themselves without having to think about, oh, I got to take care of my kids, my husband, my parents, I got to do this for this, you know. Uh, women, uh, we, we, we are so good at multitasking and taking care of other people that we leave little to no energy for taking care of ourselves. So it's a lot of self-care, self-compassion, um, having time for themselves is the biggest, biggest, biggest um, problem or obstacle that they present with. It's interesting. Uh, it's so funny because in the last five days, I have had lunch with and talked with two women who left very, very nice positions uh, and I mean, they were making tons of money and they were traveling everywhere, but they didn't have time for themselves. And that's why they left. And I wonder how many men would do that. You know, I guess not as many because they, of course, consider themselves the breadwinner. Although I have found that in many cases, women are the breadwinner, you know, so uh, it's interesting mm-hmm. how bo- how different sides reflect this. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, we have just a minute left. So is there anything else that you would like to tell our audience, Debbie? Yes. Well, just my final message is that happiness can be learned and you have it within yourself right now to start tapping into that happiness gene. And you could do it through a, a simple technique as laughing, smiling, doing a random act of kindness for somebody, doing something that's positive to help you start bringing your positivity level up. So it doesn't have to cost you any money. You just have to start really devoting time to cultivating more happiness. In ah, life. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. Right. Well, yeah. My, my, yeah, my guest has been Debbie Lynn Toomey. Uh, her website is healthandhappinessspecialist.com. 
Thanks so much for being with us today, Deb. We really appreciate it. And I know people oh. will, will start looking at their happiness quotient and seeing what they, they come up with. <laughs> right. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Thank you.